Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and today we finally took the plunge after maybe a year of debate, or at least research from my perspective to try to figure out how to best make a New England style IPA. It's cloudy, it's juicy. This I actually named this Juicy AF. This is my New England IPA. Juicy as friends? As friends, because uh -huh. that's how I roll. Juicy AF is a New England style IPA that I brewed at the end of August and we're having it here almost a month later. Um, and I think that as we know about the style, it needs to be consumed as fresh as possible. And um, I'll tell you that even like a week or two later after uh, kegging this, you know, it's, uh, it's still very tasty, but like those first few pours, that's something else. Um, so let's dive right into how I made this. Um, let's start with the grain bill. We uh, looked up uh, that uh, Hetty Topper has uh, has pearl malt in it. Okay. Thomas Fawcett pearl malt. This is a five gallon batch for you uh, uh, checking it out at home. I'll put the uh, recipe in the description below so you can look at it. But Thomas Fawcett pearl malt, 13 pounds in the five gallon batch. I I don't know. I always think that I need to put a little bit more malt in there and get a little more balance, but we'll talk about that after yeah, we taste it. I don't know if the style's about balance. That's but right. Keep going. I put in a half pound of Munich Type 1 from Vinerman, Vinerman. Just a little bit of Munich in there, just to, I don't know, not put any crystal in it, but just have another malty. Type 1 that's like 8 love or something? Yeah, like? I think, yeah. Uh, I don't know specifically, but it's not It's not the 10. Right. Um, and then for the the you know the kind of silkiness the smoothness as we learned, uh, flaked body. flaked barley yes a little bit of body uh, flaked barley uh, does a nice thing so I put a pound of flaked barley in it and a pound of flake white wheat and then so that it could finish dry a pound of white sugar with 15 minutes to go in the boil so we'll talk about that now water chemistry everyone talks about it. Never heard of it. <laughs> Our water stinks here, but uh, since it's a New England style IPA, um, I thought that I would just our, our our tap water, his and my top tap water has like a high level of sodium in it. A high level of sodium high and level. chloride. And chloride. Yeah. So I just cut. I used nine waters yeah. in total. Nine yeah. gallons of water in total. Yeah. Three gallons uh, was distilled water. Just distilled. And then nine was filtered tap, um, and I and I did the calculations and I kind of balanced it out, because then what I did was I added like 10 grams of uh, of gypsum to it, and that balanced out everything. So like the chloride and the sulfate were sort of like around the same amounts of uh, yep. you know per per million, um, and I brought the sodium way down, which yep. is nice. Brought the calcium up because I put in some calcium sulfate and so it was all kind of just a balanced water uh, profile um, now to before I get to the hops I'll talk about the yeast uh, I got the is the giga yeast Vermont IPA I got one pouch pouch of it and I made a three liter starter just to get the things going so um, with that the hop profile the hop uh, additions are as follows so, get your pen and pencils ready. Yeah. <laughs> So I just stay, stick with four different varieties, Simcoe, Amarillo, Galaxy, and Mosaic. Just four varieties. Just four. Um, Simcoe for its pininess, Amarillo for what I thought was going to be a really orangey, citrusy blast, Galaxy and Mosaic. Galaxy, I know we did that smash beer, I thought that was just a really special beer. Mosaic, I know we, we made a smash beer, I actually re-watched that video. It's sort of hard to pull out while we were trying to taste there. There's like, you know, it had like a piney aroma and it had like yep. kind of a grapefruit pith in the taste, but like some stone fruit in the aroma. It's like, yep. and that's like not what it should be. It should be like more melony, more fruit punchy. Mm -hmm. But I said, all right, well, let's just throw it and make sure we just put it in the end of the boil. So the additions, I had a, an ounce of Simcoe at 30 minutes ago in the boil. That's it. That's all. And everything else was like either a flame out or you know, way past uh, the end of the boil. Okay, so at Flame Out, I had one ounce of Simcoe, one ounce of Amarillo, one ounce of Galaxy. At, to, cooled it down a little bit, started the Whirlpool, threw in some more hops. One ounce of uh, Simcoe, one ounce of Amarillo, one ounce of Galaxy. 
So once that was done, transferred it to my, um, our, my fermenter. And then um, with three days to go, this was all on Sunday, uh, the 27th of August. On Wednesday, August 30th, I put in three more ounces of hops. This time it was Mosaic, Amarillo, and Galaxy. And then with the seven minutes, I'm sorry, seven days into the fermentation period, I put in uh, an ounce of Galaxy and two ounces of Mosaic. And that's happening in the primary fermenter. That still. is all happening okay. in the primary fermenter. Okay. By day 10 of primary fermentation, I was racking that out. Mm -hmm. Racked it out to a keg and started to carve it up. I also racked with like a, 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 a like I made sure that I had like a filter on my yep. siphon. Mm -hmm. I had like one of those fine mesh bags. I, sand, I boiled it, I sanitized it, I then put a rubber band <laughs> around my siphon and just went uh, I auto siphoned that out of the fermenter into the keg. So I didn't get a lot of um, hop debris into the actual keg. So that's that. Uh, fermented at um, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Starting gravity was 1065. I finished off at 1012. Uh, for mash um, information, uh, did a 60 minute mash at 155 degrees. Again, to get a little more body into it. And uh, that's what I got. So, since I did all the talking, you should probably do some of the scribing. Okay. Um, it was definitely a, I think, a subtle melon, maybe slightly underripe peach flesh type of aroma mm. to it. Um, but it's backed up with some tangerine and there's a very subtle pine maybe and like some of that garlic type of thing from the Simcoe, not in an unpleasant way, just characteristic of it, right? Um, and then the flavor follows suit. It's yeah. uh, There's definitely a, a fruit quality to it, a fruitiness to it, and it's, um, it's really harmonized pretty well. It's pretty well balanced. I wouldn't say any one of those hops is like screaming out at me. It's more of an overall experience, which I, yeah. I think is what you're sort of going for in this style. Um, the body is def there's definitely some residual body there, and there's definitely a smoothness to the whole experience, yeah. which uh, you know I'm gonna assume is some of our high chloride water uh, helping you out there. Um, uh, overall, I think it comes together pretty good. Now, as you mentioned before, this is a little bit old, and the styles you know fade. The, some of the magic can fade pretty quick, but I remember from w when we were hitting this on the keg when it was fairly fresh. Um, all that stuff was just sort of amplified a little bit. Yeah. One thing that's sort of faded for me is one thing I always get in this style is sort of like just a a, a, a hop pellet bag sort of experience on yeah. my palate, yeah. which I don't actually really care for, but I sort of tolerate it in order to enjoy the rest of what the style delivers. But that just that dry pellet thing is sort of faded a little bit, and the rest of it is just the fruit flavors. I mean, it's hard to know whether or not how much that the yeast profile I'm experiencing because it, it's just so hop forward. I and know. It's just so hop flavor forward. Yep. Um, there's practically zero bitterness in this on the palate. I mean, there's just there's just a little bit of like a dry hop bite, but the rest of it is smoothness. It's fruity. Um, it's it's really great. Absolutely, and I actually brought it to work, and I, and I called it UCAF, and they were like, "Well, what kind of fruits?" That like some people are drinking, it. like, "Okay, well, what fruits are you are you putting in?" Like, now this is all hop derived. That's to the uninitiated, I think this style of beer is pretty eye opening to certain people. Yeah. Be for that reason, um, it can be pretty interesting to think that there, it's a it's a fr you're going to describe it as fruity, and people it tastes fruity, and people are going to think, "Oh, that's that's a fruit beer." Right. Right. But it's not. It's all hops. So this is the end of it. The this is the last. This is it. So bits of it. we had. You gotta drink this stuff fast. I know you did. gotta drink it fast. I brought a, a growler to work, and then we had the party, which we drank a lot off the keg, and then I basically had a growler, and yep. and, and this was this was it. So I saw <laughs> in your notes like, you you're starting grab about ten sixty five, yep. right? Yep. And w roughly, did you check what it finished at? Where did it finish? Ten ten twelve. Ten twelve. Okay. Yep. Great. So what do you think the ABV is on this roughly? Mm. That calculates out to we'll put it. I'll so, put it in the notes. Somewhere in the seven, seven percent ish. Okay. Yeah. No, it's just it's a it's important. I mean, the alcohol, like a lot of these beers, the alcohol doesn't like present itself. No, but you I don't think, really realize it. But when you, you're drinking it off the keg yes. and you have 
three of them in fairly quick succession, and it's hot out. You're going, oh, wow, oh, that beer, that beer, that's a that beer has something to it. Yeah, I think yeah. that it was 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 the yeah. big effect that I had was that it was so drinkable because it was drinking like orange juice, yeah. like it had a very fruity. Uh, thing going on and yeah. it made it very easy to drink a whole bunch yeah. very quickly but then you are kind of knocked a little bit back by you know seven plus percent alcohol yeah. beers going on so I think my only n negative comment I love the hot bill and I love the hot presentation my only like critical comment would be even when we first pour it off the keg is that it's a little bit browner yeah. than I right it's more it reminds yeah. me of um I think the it reminds me of one of the beers from Bissell Brothers that we've had, which tastes great, but it's got like just just this weird dark, like the haziness thing is yeah. is interesting. But I really think when you're designing these beers, you want to try to shoot for yellow, so it almost looks like a wit beer, yeah, no, or you I want agree. to it's like a light orange, so yep. it really like sort of glows in the glass. Yeah, yeah. This. While it tastes great, <laughs> looks when ugly. It, when it comes down to people saying, "Oh, the haze," I hate the haze. Um, this is why they hate the and haze. And that's why they, they the drink it a in a bit. can. You know, yeah, exactly. Um, um, my thought is that that was. Thanks for bringing that up, because next time, no Munich, it's going to be probably I'll throw in another half pound of uh, pale malt. Um, heck, maybe even some Pilsner. I don't know, but like I think I don't think that you're going to get a lot of uh, color from the flake barley. You're not going to get any color from the the uh, the wheat. Mm -hmm. I know that people were really go, oh, "Where's the oats?" But like, like we've discussed in an oatmeal stout, like does there need to be oats when you can probably get the same kind of effect out of flaked barley, and probably more so yeah. than you know what you'll get from you know flaked oats. So that's why I did that. But I'm guessing like if I take out the Munich, that's my next step. Like to to improve upon that is to make it that. Yeah. More the yellowy white beer look yeah. to it, and then we should be good to go. Awesome. All right. So hopefully, you know, you have another uh, resource for making these uh, New England IPAs. They just are... keep an open mind with this style. <laughs> but I think that this is what people are are looking to brew nowadays. I'll tell you, like I, I bring this to people who, you know, only drink my beer because I bring it into work, and they were like, "This is the best thing." that I've ever had of yours and I wonder how much that is like we have been taught as like beer geeks that this is great beer that like some of the like classic styles now take a back seat or you know it really it really was good I don't know but at the same time it can be improved and I'm giving you more information because I think that if if you don't if you're not living here it's not everywhere to you know like every on every corner of every street um might be uh Good to look through over this recipe. Give it a give it a whirl, and let me know how you think. It, it's a lot of hops, man. <laughs> a lot of hops. And actually, expensive beer to brew. We might want to do another video where I sh where I show like the dry hop process because I'm kind of set up with that big mouth bubbler. Yep. And then the depth charge. Yep. It's like a nice screen thing. It made dry hopping so much easier. Well, I think for sure. I don't know about you, but I. I think we'll brew one or two of these again. We are definitely and, going to brew this, and we'll put a little bit more effort into pre-production of like shooting some of the, yep. the session and all those hops going in. Absolutely, It'll cool. Be hop porn. <laughs> uh, are we going to have to put up an age restriction on the channel? If necessary. Okay. Whatever. It, whatever it takes. Awesome. For John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, Juicy AF. Cheers. <laughs>